Thank you very much. And it's um, very nice to see so many people in pink today for Pink Day. Um, I want to ask some questions about <clears throat> the Royal Alexandra Hospital Regional Fertility and Women's Endocrine Clinic and the announcement that was made in November that um, infertility would not be... Um, the procedures wouldn't be done there any longer. And, of course, it closed in February. So there's been quite a bit of um, confusion and um, I think maybe some misinformation. I don't think it's it's intentional, but I know a number of patients are left quite confused by the whole process. Um, so one question I do have is, do we understand how much money will be saved by the government by closing down this clinic? Yeah, thank you very much for the question. And uh, we know how personal this uh, um, challenge with uh, infertility is for families. And uh, and for those who want to have children, uh, it can be uh, extra challenging. And we um, also uh, know that it can be a really stressful time for patients. I want to reiterate that any of the non-insured services, those are the pieces that won't be delivered there. But the insured services, including diagnostics, um, uh, additional uh, counseling services, uh, will uh, be covered. We're also covering the cost differential between the AHS clinic and the and the other clinics of the patients choosing um, through a transition period and uh, um, uh, two hours of access to mental health counselors, uh, cost of transfer of frozen materials. So, so money is not uh, a, a driver for sure in this first year in particular because we want to ensure a smooth transition. But this is about things that are covered uh, publicly being delivered in public facilities and having the uh, expertise uh, within that facility to provide the public piece and the pieces that uh, aren't and have never been covered publicly that have been through um, uh, additional payments outside of scope being done in a different facility. So I do understand right now that some of the patients are being charged by AHS for blood work and my understanding from the information that was given to the patients <laughs> was that that was one of the things that would be covered for the patients. So I'm wondering um, if maybe be that something that can be looked into on their behalf? So, yeah, if you're uh, willing to connect them with us, so that there might be pieces around the diagnostic up front versus ongoing okay. pieces after okay. a different treatment. Uh, but we'd be really happy to work with uh, them through the, the case to to identify the issues there. Okay. Um, now, I am also aware that uh, some of the physicians from the private clinics are working with government to develop... Um, uh, regulations and my understanding right now is that in the private clinics women who have a BMI over 40 are being turned down for service they're they're not being accepted as patients for infertility treatment um, and they were previously uh, being accepted. So it seems like there's a gray area. And if that's an area of development of regulation going forward, I think it's really important that the patients be aware of what might be coming down the pike um, and, and to remove as much um, confusion and misinformation for them as possible. Um, I don't know if that's something that the ministry is aware of at all. So uh, we uh, are um, looking into the blood work issue. I want to reiterate that I... Uh, um, uh, I'm not aware of public clinic policies, but I can tell you that there aren't government regulations that are are driving this. The the private clinics or clinics in general uh, may have uh, policies around uh, decisions uh, around patient uh, um, access and, and and outcomes to based on based. I'm assuming based on medical best practices, but uh, uh, policies within their own clinic um, uh, that are related to uninsured services wouldn't be something that government is involved in. I think that could be an area that would really be beneficial to people who are receiving fertility treatments to have some, some regulations around it so that there's an even playing field and they know what to expect. Even if they are seeking treatment in private um, clinics, it, it gives them a more, um, I guess, realistic out view, uh, view of, what's, of what they're likely to encounter. Um, and there is also a number of patients that are seeking treatment outside of Alberta and some that are seeking treatment outside of Canada as well. And I'm wondering if there's been any analysis done of the costs of keeping infertility uh, within the province and actually looking at publicly funding infertility treatments versus what's happening right now and if there's an understanding of any cost benefit that might be realized by keeping those treatments um, within Alberta, within our healthcare system, within the publicly funded realm. 
Yeah, so that's a pretty complex question and uh, certainly uh, want to, again, honor all of the folks who are struggling with uh, fertility um, for uh, a variety of different situations. I know that it can, oh, shoot. Thank you. 